Hi guys, um, back with another instalment. Okay, um, over the last week I've butted heads with um, <coughs> Fusion Chip a couple of times with regards to his um, feedback source. Um, now, a couple of days ago he posted up what um, um, transistor chip he was using, uh, as well as a video. Um, I looked up the technical specs for the transistor and made the discovery. Um, now, on the one hand, I was correct, but on the other hand, I was also wrong. But by the same token, Fusion Chip was correct and wrong. Yeah. Right, so, um, as I said, um, as I posted on his video, um, the back EMF from the drive coil is being shorted out. Right. But, I may, well, it suddenly occurred to me, with his transistor having low um, breakdown voltages, it occurred to me that the back EMF in the trigger coil was passing through the base of the base of the transistor up to the collector and through the battery and then back round again. As soon as I realised that, I saw the Bedini circuit in a completely different light. Um, before I was being narrow-minded, short-sighted, whatever you want to call it, in that I was thinking that the back EMF was only coming off the drive coil. Actually, the trigger coil would be doing the same thing again. Hmm. So, here's a little circuit that I've created. It's um, a spin-off from the Bedini. Um, However, it has some remarkable features. Not only does it feed back to the source, but you now get two back EMF outputs. Here's the circuit. Right. Okay. Let's explain that. Ignore the... Um, um, diode and the transistor um, identifications. One should be able to recognise um, Q1 being transistor, R1 being your variable resistor. Okay, but the interesting thing is the arrangement of diodes and capacitors. Right, so let's explain this. Right, okay, D4 we'll start with right at the top right. that allows a back feed into the battery from the trigger coil so one side of the trigger coil is already connected to the negative side of the battery all we need to do is stick a diode in to connect it to the positive side right. here's the flow here's the voltage flow that would be happening Right, okay, so that's now clear, you can see that. Right, the other one is D3, right by the transistor itself. Okay, uh, basically this allows the circuit to bypass the transistor. Right, normally, it would only bypass the transistor from the uh, emitter to the collector if you'd reached and gone over the breakdown voltage, which on mine is, uh, well I think most of mine are at least 200 volts. So, that's a lot of voltage being waste, wasted. So instead of that, we'll use a diode to allow it to backflow around the transistor and back to the coil, as shown like this. Right, so that's now the two backflows into the battery 
uh, clearly shown. So, in addition to that, you'll notice two capacitors, C1 and C2. Right. Well, they're both basically the mirror image of um, back EMF, the standard back EMF capture from the drive coil. So, C1, D1 is the mirror image electrically um, of uh, D1, C2, which is the standard arrangement for back EMF collection. Now, I've just stuck on the diagram two capacitors there. Um, simple reason being that's actually what I've got on the circuit board. Um, that allows me to capture the voltage and see what's in there. Right. Uh, well, I might as well show you anyway. There you go. That's, uh, that's a circuit loop anyway. So, now I've only done initial experiments on the circuit. Um, unfortunately I can't really show it you because both multimeters are now flat. So they're on charge, and so is my um, uh, lead acid that I'm powering them from, unfortunately. So I can't actually show you um, the circuit work. Not that there's very much to see anyway. So, okay. Now, what do my experiments show so far? Okay. Well, the Bedini circuit itself is a very efficient um, motor, basically, uh, but also has additional properties, which is nice. It's what we like. Okay. This has now been improved so that the current test that I've got on a little 60mm fan that's been converted to um, a Bedini. Um, it's currently showing a 25% increase in efficiency. You got it. It's still drawing 38-ish uh, 30, milliamps at 12 volts, which is wonderful, nice and low. But it's back flowing about 12 milliamps to the battery. Right. Now, that might not sound very much, right? this is the Dini fan we're talking about. Uh, also, my D3 and D4 diodes have a 1.2 volt voltage loss across them. So I'm actually losing on both sides 1.2 volts, which is pretty crap really. Um, <clears throat> just for... Um, testing I've used them. Um, once I've concluded the tests um, I may well switch them out for a pair of diodes that I've got that are 0.6 volts and see as a separate test if that increases the efficiency, which it will do. So, you've got a backflow to the battery. Now, this backflow depends on what sort of a coil setup you've got. You need a bipolar, bifilar system. It will not work on a monopole system. Okay, so if your Bedini wheel just have the north faces pointed out, it won't work as well. You won't get anywhere near the efficiency that I've seen on here. However, if you are using um, a bipolar, as in north south, north south, north south, all the way around the wheel, and a bifilar coil, right? Wonderful. You will get a double feedback to the battery and two back EMF outputs, which is pretty impressive improvement to uh, the standard beam circuit. 